Hi everyone, my name is Anika and I will be conducting the tutorial session for the to-do list program. We will be using MIT App Inventor for this, so make sure you have everything set up and ready to follow along. And the first step for you to make is to create a new app and name it to-do list as a preparatory precaution because I will not be teaching you how to create an account or an app or anything like that. Um, just for fair warning, this might be at a pace that you might not be able to understand that because it's not um, a live class. So feel free to pause at any places where you might need some time to catch up. Um, so let's get started with slides. So when you create a to-do list app, um, we want our data to be saved. So that basically means if I were to say, um, clean the gutter or something as my first task and I were to edit the app because I have something like really urgent to do and if I opened it up again I would want it to say clean the gutter and I wouldn't want it to like um, go away because then I would forget and it would destroy the point. So that's basically what we're going to be working on doing today. And you will also learn how to access the long-term data storage capability of your mobile device using the TinyDB component of MIT App Inventor. So we'll get more into what the blocks look like and how everything works in that later on. So the next slide will have this GIF that will show what the finished app will kind of look like and what you can do um, with the app once we're finished. So basically, um, that's what the GIF looks like. Um, you can just wait and see the whole way to see what it does, but it's basically an example of what you can do with it. Um, so the user is entering a task like call mom, and in, they are also putting another one like pick up laundry, and there's basically just a whole bunch of tasks. And if they click erase item or clear all, it'll do a bunch of different things. So that's, um, you can basically just use the clear all feature when you um, want to erase everything and you can do the erase one when you only want to erase one task and that happens when you finish it basically. So here is an example of how the user interface looks. So obviously you don't want random people to come to your phone and go look at private tasks that you want to do in the day. Like if your sibling were to come and you know get into your phone and wants to look at your to-do list app and they basically just enter a password and they hit enter and everything. Um, that basically just lets us um, as creators as well as the users know that their work and privacy is insured and no one else can access it. And some of the components used in this is text input, label, button, and vertical arrangement. Obviously, these aren't all of them, and it's not very specific, but we'll get more into that a little bit later. So this is what the second screen or user interface part two looks like. So if the password is inputted correctly in the last screen, the user will be permitted access to a second interface, which looks like the one on the left here. And this is where they can erase or enter tasks. So if you remember seeing this on GIF, great job. This is basically how it'll look like. Um, in this one, some of the components used are text input, label, button, vertical arrangement, lists, and tiny DB. So based on your past, um, endeavors, you probably know what the first four are. The fifth and sixth one might be a little bit foreign, but don't worry because we're definitely going to be covering more. So the first step that we're going to do is create your home screen. So right now, I don't want you guys to follow along or do anything with this right now because I just kind of want to explain the purpose of each screen and the components on each one before actually showing you how to do it on MIT App Inventor itself. But the first thing you want to do is create two screens in MIT App Inventor. Um, you can basically name them anything, but it would be most, most beneficial to name it intro screen and list screen. Again, you don't have to do it because I'm going to be having minus screen one and screen two, just to make it easier for me. And when you're coding and you want to keep up with what I'm doing, it'll probably be easier for you to name them that. 
And on the first screen, add the following components, which we can see on the right. And those are vertical arrangement one, password label, password text box, and password button. And you can edit your button names to match the user interface on the last slide. So one thing I want to make sure you guys know is that text box and password text box are different things. So when you're signing in on an app and you want to do something, um, you want to enter your password or get into a certain thing that might be password protected. We don't usually have our password shown just in case someone's like looking over your shoulder or invading your privacy. It usually shows the little dots. So password text box helps with that. So this is the list screen and using the list of components to the right and the phone screen displayed to the right, you can try to match the user interface yourself. Obviously, I'm going to be explaining it in further detail later, but this is just a broad overview of what we're going to cover. So as you can see here, we have a label, a text input. This one is a regular text input. You can tell because it has the little eye looking symbol where the last one had like the dots. And then we have a horizontal arrangement, three buttons, a to-do list view, and a TinyDB1. So one thing I also want to clarify is that TinyDB1 actually is a non-visible component, which means you can't actually see it on the screen, which is why um, we don't see it on here in the screenshot. So study the components on the screen, and do you think you can build this user interface on your own? So you guys can pause the video here and try to do a few experiments, um, whatever you feel like doing. And make sure your components' names match the ones displayed so you don't get confused when you're coding. OK, so let's actually begin constructing an MIT App Inventor itself. So now is basically the time I want you guys to take a few minutes to open up MIT App Inventor, try to get everything situated and all that jazz. Um, yeah, you guys can just pause the video and go ahead and do that. So the first step I want everyone to do is go to screen one and stay on that. Don't add anything, but um, if you see the align horizontal and align vertical, try to center everything to center three and center two. And the purpose of this is just to make sure that random stuff, so these buttons and things like that aren't at random positions on the screen because that would be like a little bit awkward to look at and hard to follow. And what's really handy about a new update in MIT App Inventor is that you can actually search up components, which is really cool. So we don't have to manually go through everything and try to find stuff. But the first thing I want you guys to look up is vertical arrangement. So what this specific component does is that it arranges everything within it um, in a vertical form. So if we had multiple buttons or something, it would put them all vertically rather than horizontally. So what we want to do with that is set the width to fill parent so it doesn't look really awkward. It can fill a whole bunch of stuff and make the color of it gray. And we also want to center everything within this, just so it doesn't look awkward. So we don't actually want to rename this component because it would be pretty confusing if it had a normal name, like a button or something. Vertical arrangement one is perfectly OK. But if you think you won't get confused when I'm coding and you're following along, then go ahead and do it if you want to. But the next component we're going to be using is a label. So again, use the component search bar and look up label. And that should go over there. And what you're going to put inside this label is um, enter the password to access the to-do list. And that's basically how the user is going to know where to put it. Okay, there we go. Um, something else we want to do is rename this component. So what I'm going to name it is um, password label. And again, no spaces with that. 
So that's pretty cool. Um, next, we're going to be searching up password text box in the components. And like I talked about earlier, password text box is not the same thing as regular text box. This one adds the dots that help um, make the user's password secure. Make sure to put this inside of the vertical arrangement itself, just so that it's not outside and kind of messes up the entire thing. Um, we don't actually have to change any of this, but we also, but we actually want to rename it to password text box. Actually, it's already like that. Never mind. Um, yeah, we don't want to make any modifications to this. So the last thing we're going to use for screen one is a button. So the basically title of this button would be um, password button. And that's what we're going to name it. And the text we're going to put inside is call it password. Uh, we're probably going to keep this a little bit more simple, so I'm just going to say enter here. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for screen one. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to kind of pause your video and um, make sure you have everything that's the same as mine. So you can go ahead and pause here and try to match it as much as you possibly can. Okay, so let's move on to screen two. Okay, so it's obviously just a bit of an empty screen right now. Um, but again, we want to center everything on this page just like we did with the last, just so it doesn't look awkward. Um, let us center all of that. Um, and the first component we're going to be putting inside is a label. And we're going to type this as to-do list. Okay, let us call it to do list. And basically what we're gonna do also is um, rename this component to title label. And afterward, we're gonna use the other component search bar to look up text input. Um, just for reference, this is not the same as password um, text box, just because um, this one has the dots and this one has like the eye shape looking thing, like I always mention. Um, we also want to set the width to this fill parent. We don't want to touch the height. And this is just to ensure like anything that the user wants to type fits. So like if they have a really long looking task, then it's okay and it won't flow over and it'll be fine and we're actually going to rename this component to to do text box okay so your screen should be looking a little bit like that right now and let's go to the component search bar and look up horizontal arrangements so as opposed to vertical arrangement, this will basically make anything within it as um, horizontal. So last time we wanted all the components to be in a list type thing, but now we want all of the buttons that are going to be inside of this to be right next to each other. So along with the last component, we're also going to make the width of this as fill parent and we're not going to touch the height. And the three things we're going to put inside is three buttons. So let's go to the components area and put in three buttons. It might look a little awkward right now, but we can adjust the size later on, depending on our needs. So let's work on the first button first. So the first one will be labeled enter item button. So let's call it that. And its actual um, name would be enter item, and we're going to put like a few fun colors just to make it exciting. So the color that I'm going to use is neon green. 
And let's go to the second button. So this one is the um, button that's essentially going to erase one specific task that you, the user has, not the entire thing or um, not nothing. So this one is going to be called erase item button. And we're going to put its label as erase item. And I actually want to put a fun color for this one too. So I'm going to put it as orange. Okay, so this is actually our last button. And this one, if you might have already guessed, is the clear all button, which means it'll basically erase everything that the user has inputted earlier. Okay, so I think I forgot to do this earlier, but make sure you center stuff inside the horizontal arrangement so it doesn't look odd. Okay, so that's pretty much what your screen should look like right now, um, but we're going to be adding a list view to this. So let me just look it up. Okay, there we go. It looks kind of weird, but we're going to be adding stuff and making it look good right now. Um, I'm going to be making the text size 30. And I'm also going to be renaming it to to do list view. Okay, um, I'm also going to be making a few other modifications like making the height fill parent. There we go. And the last thing that I'm going to do, and this one is the final one for screen two, is adding a tiny DB component. So something unique about this one is that it is a non-visible component, which means it will not show up on the main screen. It'll be showing up in the bottom over here and over there if you need some reference. And that's actually pretty much it for the user interface. So now we're going to be going back to the slides and we're basically just going to come up with some ways. For you guys to learn a little bit more about TinyDB and the functionality of the code you're going to be writing a little bit later. So what is TinyDB exactly? So it's basically a component that stores data locally on the user's phone or tablet and it can only be accessed on the user's phone. So if you've known of things that have like a username or sign up, that's probably just for them to access it on multiple different devices. But for TinyDB specifically, if I were to create a password on my cell phone, I couldn't go on my computer and go log into the same app just because it's locally stored. It's a little bit similar to CloudDB, but CloudDB essentially allows multiple users to store, access, and modify data in the cloud. So this is kind of a um, little overview of how each block works. So the first block here is called TinyDB1.StoreValue, and it kind of looks like this. It's purple. It looks like any other um, block for TinyDB. But this block essentially allows the user to store a value in a device's local memory using a unique tag. And the second block I have here is the tinyDB1.get value. And this block basically allows the user to retrieve a value stored in the local memory of a mobile device using its unique tag. And if there is no such tag, the user can input a message for it to display. So if there's no tag, I could say error, not able to retrieve the data or something like that, just so the user knows that there's some error going on. And the third little block I have here is tinyDB1.clearTag. So this block will clear the content in the memory associated with a given unique tag. So as an example, if I were to retrieve a piece of data with the tag hello, it would clear it for me and it wouldn't like clear the entire thing which really comes in handy when we're talking about a to-do list. 
And the last and final tag is the clear all tag. So if you remember the clear all button that we saw, this is basically what we're going to be using for code. And this block will basically clear the entire content stored in a tiny DB1. And for example, if a user wanted to restart their code, they can basically use this block. So this is basically how we're going to be adding functionality to screen one. Once again, similar to the slides for the screen aesthetics, I don't really want you guys to follow along at this point in time. This is basically for me to explain the purpose of each one since I'm probably not gonna have time when I'm actually showing you which components and how to use them um, in terms of the screen. But um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna use phrases like select screen one, but that's for me and that's for you to know what I'm talking about. So the first step is to select screen one from the screen menu and switch to the box editor. And the first um, button and the only type of functionality that we're gonna be needing for this is the password button. And when the user clicks on the password button, it basically lets them choose a password and if the password entered by the user matches the password we chose for them, the app should open screen two. But if it doesn't, then the password text box should be cleared so the user can try again. That's basically the kind of functionality we're looking to achieve with this screen. So adding functionality to screen two. So this one has like a whole bunch of functionality um, necessities as we have like three buttons and some text inputs as well. So this is just basically a generalized overview. Um, so the first thing I want you guys to do is select screen two from the screen menu and switch to the box editor. So the overview is that we're gonna initialize a variable to-do list, which will be used to keep track of items in the list, which is empty right now. And when screen two is initialized, we can get the my to-do list tag from tinyDB and store its value into the to-do list variable. Then we can set the elements of the list view component to the to-do list variable. So that's basically it for a summary of the functionality in screen two. I hope you guys kind of understood that a bit, but now we're gonna be constructing this on MIT App Inventor. Okay, so first let's start with screen one. So as I said earlier, the purpose of this is to kind of verify the user's password and do things like that. So we're gonna be using a function. And this is a pretty popular function and it basically lets um, as, as coders do something once a user and I might, once a coder wants something to happen on the click of a button in MIT App Inventor. So we're gonna be going to the password button and we're going to be clicking when the password button dot click do function. And the first thing we're going to be putting inside here is an if then else statement. Um, this is pretty self explanatory. This is for us to know whether the password is actually right, if it's wrong, or something like that. Okay, so let's go to control and click if then else. Okay, um, and the second thing we're going to use is math, and we're just going to use the equal sign. And the first thing we want to do is get the text from the password text box, and I'm just going to use some random password like one two three four, um, just so that we don't have to get into the complexity of user verification for login and sign up and things like that. Okay, so that's basically what your code should look like right now. Actually, I'm going to switch this out for a math one. Let me just find it really quickly. Yeah. Okay, um, so then we're going to say once the user's um, password matches the one that we have, we want to open another screen name. And that screen obviously is the screen too. There we go. 
Okay, so in else we want to set the password text box. So we want to reset it so the user can try again. So we want to set password text box one text box one dot text to nothing. Okay, so that's basically all the code we're going to want to have for screen one. So if you have that, that's great. But if you're not done yet, feel free to pause whenever you need to because I realize that this is a different pace than what you're probably used to. Um, but let's move on to screen two. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is initialize a global to-do list. And this is basically for us to track what exactly the user is adding to their list. Okay, so initialize global to-do list to create empty lists. So we're going to be going to the list section and we're going to be doing this. Create empty list, and we're going to copy paste this, and we're going to be creating a new one. And the purpose of this is the to do text box. So right now we have two creations of empty lists, which we're going to be referring to later on. Okay, so the first um, little function we're going to be using is when screen to dot initialize. So these are like a series of functions that we want to happen when the user enters screen two. So the way you can get to this is clicking on screen two and scrolling down a little bit. It should be the third one on there. And the first thing we're going to do is set global to do list to call tinydb one dot get value. So we're basically just going to call whatever values the user had stored earlier. Okay, so we have that over there, and I'm going to go to the tinydb1 section, and I am going to go to get value. And the tag we specifically had it under was my to-do list. So value of tag not there, I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, actually, I'm actually going to replace it with a create empty list, just in case one hasn't already been created. And the last thing we're going to do for this specific function is set to do list view dot element to get global to do list. So that's basically going to replace everything that was previously into the to do list view, which should have been nothing if they were a new user or basically just erase everything they had earlier. Okay. Set to do list view dot elements to get global to do list. Okay, so that's basically all you should have for now, but the next little function we're going to be doing is when enter item button dot click. So if you want to go to design and refer back to this again, it's basically this button, and we're basically just going to um, code and tell the program. I mean, tell the computer what's going to happen when the user clicks that button. So let's click on enter item button. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is we want to add whatever the user used in the input to a list. So let's go to the list section. And let's take this function. Um, so we want the global to-do list to contain this. So that's basically what we're going to have. 
and the specific item we want is the text of the to do list text box. Okay, so the next little piece of code we're going to do is we're going to store the value so it's permanently there and not just temporarily. So we're going to call tinydb1.store value. And the tag we're going to do is my to do list. My to do list. And for the value, if tag not there, um, I mean, value to store is get global to do list. Okay, um, so the next two, and these are the two last things for this specific function, is to set to do list view dot elements to get global to do list. So this is basically the last thing that we did in the previous function. And this is basically just so that the elements that we had earlier are also transferred to this one. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for it really quickly. Um, set to do list dot view. Okay, um, just to make things easier, I'm just going to copy paste it. No, wait, I don't think that works. <laughs> um, to do list text box. dot text. And for the elements, as I said earlier, we want to set it to get global to do list. And we want to set to do box dot text to my to do list. So now we're moving on to the next function. And this one is the erase item button, which you might be familiar with and what you saw earlier. So let's go to that one. So let's click on the erase item button and say when erase item dot button dot click. So the stuff we want to do when the user clicks this is create an if then statement and say that if whatever thing that the user has clicked on and if that thing actually exists, we want to remove that item from the global to do list um, list that we have. And we want to set the to do list view dot elements to global dot to do list. And we also want to call tinydb one dot store value with the tag of my to do list and say the value to store is get global dot to do list. And we also want to set to do list view dot selection index to zero, which means that thing will be completely erased. So as I said earlier, the first thing we want to do is get an if then statement. And in the if statement, we want to get a math um, component, and we want this to be there, and we're going to do a not equal one. So this is basically just verifying if whatever the user has clicked on is not zero or some other um, number that we, we can't actually handle. Um, let me just find my to do this field dot. Selection index, and we're also going to get something else from math. And that particular one is a zero. So this is basically, as I said before, just verifying that it actually exists. So now we're going to get something from list, and this is the remove list item component. OK, um, so we're going to say the list is get global dot to do list, since that's what we're referring to. 
and we want our index to be to do list view dot selection index. So we can just copy paste this. Okay, um, so there are a few other things we want to do for the then statement, and the first one of that is to select um, set the to do list view dot elements to get global to do list. Um, so I'm sure we've done that before, so we can just copy paste that. We don't really need to do much. And the next thing we want to do is call tinyDB1.store value because we want to basically know and we want the computer to know that this was a race. So when the user goes out and comes back in, um, they don't have the um, task that they had originally erased to be there. So the tag we had was my to-do list. And the value to store is get global dot to do list. Okay, um, so the last and final thing for this function is set to, setting to-do list view dot selection index to zero. There we go. So that's the end of this particular function. And now we're actually going to move on to our last one. And this is the clear all button, which you might remember, and you probably should remember since we did it. Um, such a few minutes ago, I think. Um, so let's go to the erase all button and do our classic one erase all button dot click. And for the insides of this, we want to do an if then statement. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. Um, um, no if then statement for this, but we're going to set global dot to do list to create an empty list. So since the user has erased everything they previously had, we need to create an empty list so that um, everything's completely erased. And we're going to set to do list view dot elements to also a new thing. And if you remember, we also actually did this in another place. Okay, so now the last and final thing is we want to use the tinyDB1.clear tag function. Okay, and we're going to say the tag is my to do list. Okay, so that's actually pretty much that we all that we have for today. I hope you guys um, enjoyed everything and you understand how to do this now. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Bye.